Okay, boys and girls, today we are going to be talking about my 10 knives to stay. Now, if you've been around the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've had a lot of knives and I still have a lot of knives. And while I do like many of them, these are 10 knives that are here to stay that I definitely would never get sold off or traded off or really gotten rid of. So without any further ado, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon. It all helps out the channel a ton. So now now let's jump right into it. Okay, so I, I thought why not start with the very first one, or at least probably the oldest on the list, and that would be the Mora Clipper. Now this is back from the good old days of Mora. Hopefully you guys can see there the actual Mora in the blade. It's a little bit hard to see because of the forced patina, but this is really one of the first knives I got for outdoor bushcrafting and wilderness kind of living, you know, camping and stuff like that. So this was kind of the knife that started it all, and I really think that uh, it can't go away just for that reason. In addition to that, though, it's actually just a really solid knife. I mean, this Mora Clipper is an excellent example of why Mora was so popular with bushcrafters and campers all across the globe for years before any of the kind of more famous or kind of more notorious uh, bushcrafting or survival knives came on the scene. Mora really made a solid general task blade. And so the Mora Clipper is the first one that is here to stay that I would never get rid of. Okay, the next one in kind of chronological sequence would have to be the Topps Fieldcraft. Now, the Topps Fieldcraft definitely made some waves when it first dropped. It is a very well-known, very well-loved knife by many people. Mine has definitely seen better days, though I have blued it to help it with rust resistance and a few other things. Of course, I've touched up the edge over the years as it got duller and, you know, just sharpened it and kept it up to speed. But the Topps Fieldcraft is probably not the best knife for bushcrafting or for camping, but it does a lot of things pretty darn well and pretty darn excellently. So the Topps Fieldcraft has to be on this list because it is just a great general purpose knife. And once again, it was kind of my first real step up from something like a Mora. I had, you know, a couple Moras, like companions and clippers before this guy, but this was the first real knife that really was a solid blade for me and, you know, helped to be kind of further up my bushcrafting. So that's why it has to stay kind of a heritage piece for me. Okay, the next one, and one that is not shown terribly often on the channel nowadays, but definitely is here to stay, would have to be my SC3. Now, I got this SC3 kind of on a whim because I got it as the knife company or knife distributor, Knives Ship Free or KSF. They were shifting locations, and I think they've actually shifted locations or changed locations for a third time. But when they were moving from their original place to Escanaba, Michigan, they had a big blowout sale and they were selling their knives for crazy prices, including but not limited to this SE3. And so for the price they were wanting, I think it was like, I think 50 bucks or something like that. I was like, what the heck? You know, it's probably not everyone's favorite colors, this bright green with or bright orange with a green blade. But I was like, might as well test it out, see what everyone was talking about when it comes to Essies. And I've had this one for, I think, close to five years. It's been definitely quite some time, and I really honestly enjoy it. It is a little bit thin for a lot of what I do, but it is a really great knife, and I have carried it a lot and still do carry it quite a bit. Makes an excellent hunting knife as well with its super thin profile. It is great for skinning and caping. But overall, the SC3 is a knife to stay because it was my first SC and my first kind of introduction to the brand that was very well uh, loved in the knife community. So that is my SC3. Okay, the next one is the BRK Bushcrafter. And this one, I think, is actually... This one is kind of funny because I had an original black handled BRK Bushcrafter and because I was not very intelligent, I actually traded it off at the time for a knife of equivalent value. But that being said, after I didn't have it for about a year, I really began to miss this blade and I really do love the BRK Bushcrafter. So I tracked another one down and bought an original Bushcrafter in CPM 3V. And like I said, this is the original, this isn't the LT or 
the 2.0. This is an original bushcrafter. These guys are pretty hard to find nowadays and definitely under no circumstances would I let this guy go because it is a fantastic bushcrafting knife that really does everything I want it to. And it's such a general purpose blade and handle shape that if I go out and I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be doing on any given day, I know that this knife will conquer just about anything in my hands. So yeah, this is one of my favorite go-to bushcrafting knives and has been for many years. I think I got my original one about nine years ago, maybe eight, and you know, I had that for many years and sold it. And after about a year, got another one back. But this guy is absolutely incredible. Really do love the BRK Bushcrafter. It is impossible to beat, in my opinion, for a good general purpose bushcrafting knife. Okay, next one up on the list is going to be the Battle Horse Knives or BHK Battle Lore. Now this is another one that's similar to my BRK Bushcrafter. I had one originally that was uh, sent to me for review by Battle Horse and I, in an act of kind of stupidity, traded it off for another knife. I ended up regretting that and about a year after that ended up buying another Battle Horse Knives Battle Lore. And this one is once again just a knife that I find very hard to beat. They have somehow made the ergonomics on the BHK battle lore so great and the blade so well that it feels in hand like a larger knife but performs like a smaller knife and that can do larger knife tasks and it is a very precise very effective knife and I really do enjoy it. Uh, now this one did originally have uh, polished handles. I did unpolish them, if you will, just for extra traction, similar to my original BHK that had plain Jane micarta handles. But overall, this was a really great knife and I missed it a lot. So like I said, I ended up buying another one and I still absolutely love the battle lore so much. It is a really fantastic knife that I'm definitely not going to sell. Okay, and in a similar kind of uh, front, we are also talking about LT Wright, and this is the Legome. Now, this is one that I'm definitely not going to get rid of for a couple reasons. And the first one is that they are very hard to get, and this is one of those knives that I end up recommending to a lot of people, and then they turn right around and they're like, hey, you know, where can I get a LT Wright Legome? How did you get one? And I tell them, you know, bensbackwoods.com, and yeah, they're very hard. They're only made in batches, so if you are lucky enough, Enough to get one definitely snap them up but don't be surprised if you can't get one because there is kind of an unofficial waiting list of people who reliably and religiously check the website for restocks or drops of the legome but that being said the legome is on the list because it is one of the few knives that was at the time a knife that i could find that uh, Morris Kohansky, one of the original bushcraft uh, kind of makers or founders of the movement, uh, lended his hand to making and he actually owned an LT Wright Legome that was very similar to this one. Now, of course, I blew my blade and handle, but he also had the orange uh, G10 handle options. So I wanted to get the knife that uh, Morris Kohansky actually owned. And so this is what his looked like. So therefore I got mine in the orange G10 with, of course, O2. 01 tool steel as the blade. So this is, like I said, pretty much specked out like he had his, and I really wanted something that, I really wanted a knife that was, I really wanted a knife, at least one knife in my collection that was in the same collection as Boris Kohansky. So the one that I could track down was the Legome. So, like I said, he lended a helping hand in creating this knife, and that part of heritage and kind of design element really made it a, a knife that I had to have for that reason. And of course, like I said, due to that heritage, it is a knife that I'm definitely not getting rid of. It might not be my absolute favorite to run, but I do like to run it, and it is actually a really solid bushcrafting and wilderness blade. So that is the LT Wright Legome. Okay, now onto a few more kind of bushcraft 
Okay, now onto a few more bushcraft and camp knives. The 3DK MAK is one that is here to stay. It has a lot of similar features and properties to a lot of my favorite bushcrafting knives, especially the uh, BRK Bushcrafter in its blade thickness and in its overall size. This is a really great multi-purpose camp knife. And what makes it really special to me is the fact that it's made here in Alaska. This is the only knife on the list that is actually made in Alaska by an Alaskan maker. So it's really special in that regard because, of course, I do love Alaska and it was manufactured here in Alaska that I could use in Alaska. So it was designed by Alaskans for Alaskans and I definitely enjoy using it. It is a little bit more hunting oriented, but certainly does have the properties of a good camping and survival, camping and bushcrafting blade. So that is the 3DK MAK. And this one is in K110 with tan G10 handles. Okay, now on to the last bushcrafting knife of the ball. It is the JBK Layman. Now, the JBK Layman is on this list because it is a, an awesome custom knife that feels incredible in hand. It is a joy to use. It really is a fantastic knife and it performs excellently in the field. It is very precise uh, in its blade grind and its blade thickness. And it is an awesome knife, has a really cool tapered tang that is makes the ergos even better. And overall, it is a real pleasure to use. So this one is on the list because it is just a fantastic and beautiful knife that works excellently. Okay, now jumping into the last two. These are a little bit more of survival knives, but still knives to stay. And the first one is going to be the Cold Steel SRK, the full size, not the compact. This one I've had for many years itself, but the SRK itself made by Cold Steel has been around for decades. It is such a proven, used, and well-beloved survival knife. And not to mention, it is an excellent survival arm budget option and that's probably my favorite thing about this and has to be one of my most recommended knives when people come on the channel they ask you know what uh, blade should I use for survival what should I get you know for the truck or you know I'm looking for options that won't break the bank the SRK is the best option for me to recommend to them because it is a really solid option that you can put your stake your life on put your life on and it will come out on top and it will work for you really well not to mention it's also good year round because of its uh, rubberized handle that stays very temperature neutral and it's overall just a fantastic knife. It is not full tang but it is still it is still extremely durable and a really really great choice and overall like I said an awesome knife to use and it does come in a plethora of different options. Of course, this is the most base or budget model being an SK5 high carbon, but it is a really fantastic knife. And of course, the Securex sheath allows you to strap it up and use it in a multitude of different ways. Whether you want to carry it scout style, run it with a survival kit, run it in a backpack, this is a really versatile option for any of those uses and applications. Okay. So last but certainly not least is the CRK Pacific. This is a knife that has to say stay because the CRK Pacific, I guess the best way for me to put it, is that the CRK Pacific is to my survival knives what the BRK Bushcrafter is to my bushcrafting knives. This is really my do-all, kind of be-all survival knife. And it's a knife that I've practiced a lot with, that I have a lot of experience with. It is an extremely effective and reliable option. And granted, they are not the easiest to find nowadays, so that is a little bit unfortunate, but I do think that hand down this is one of the best outdoor wilderness survival knives out there it is absolutely fantastic and it works like a champ every single time not to mention the ergonomics are pretty darn stellar and you can do just about anything with this blade that you need to do so the crk pacific has to be on the list for those reasons it is a fantastic survival knife and while it is not cheap by any stretch of the imagination it is a very high performance performance and very effective blade for its given purposes and tasks. And Bill Harsey did an absolute excellent job at designing this knife 
for a multitude of different uses and purposes. And not only is it very effective, it also just looks pretty darn rad. So I have to give it to them. This is an excellent knife. Of course, mine is modified to take some of the combat kind of knife style features away from it and make it a little bit more outdoorsy. But this is a really fantastic option and obviously has to be on the list for knives to stay. Well, that has been my list of 10 knives to stay in the collection. They are not going anywhere. And from the start to the finish, these are all excellent knives. Knives, knives that I used extensively and continue to use, love to use, and at all price ranges. You know, we have $400 knives here, we have $10 knives, and it really crosses the whole spectrum of survival, bushcrafting, camping. You know, I don't necessarily, I don't want to make this list exactly just bushcraft or just survival or just camping because I have a lot of knives that I absolutely love in every spectrum. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.